Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. This podcast is being sponsored by Get Loopy. On episode 41, you can hear the story of Isabel, the co-founder and CEO. Get Loopy, get a 20% discount of your first order. Getloopy.com Take it from the Iron Woman. Again, we only have special guests here. Today, we're going to Calgary, Canada with Brian Howard, a special person that I met in the podcast fellowship of uh, Seth Godin. Brian, who are you? Who is Brian who's going to join us today for this special episode? Suzanne, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to uh, be here with you. We met almost a full year ago when mm -hmm. we both signed up for the podcast fellowship with Seth. And it's been quite a nice journey since. Who am I? I am a husband, a father, a real estate professional, I guess a real estate mm -hmm. sales guy here in Calgary, who happen to have a real interest and love for the outdoors and all things endurance sports, or really all sports that involve being self-propelled. Okay, that sounds very mm -hmm. secretive, right? So tell us about your sports. Well, so I always feel like you need to be an outdoors person, otherwise you don't live in Calgary. Maybe even Canada, yeah. But of course, there are lots of folks that aren't outdoorsy as well. But it helps to, uh, to mm -hmm. be an outdoors person and realize that, you know, there's no bad weather, but only bad clothing. That's kind of my mantra a little bit. Yeah, no, I don't mean to be secretive. I, I enjoy all sports. I, I enjoy like cycling a lot and running and mm -hmm. mountaineering, cross-country skiing, ski mountaineering, water kiting, snow kiting in the mountains. So anything that uh, doesn't involve an engine, really. And we found out we have one thing in common, the Ironman. Tell us a little bit how you got into this. Obviously, I've done only one and you have done multiple. So what is that? What is that? We maybe can call it the addiction that we have for that sport. Sure, a healthy we talking, addiction, we said, right? We were talking about passion prior to yeah, you know, yeah. jumping on this call. So I just was, I'm reading a book right now called The Passion Paradox. I learned in this, you know, I'm only on page 40 or something, that passion comes from the word suffering. And um, it's only become like, you know, what is your passion in terms of that question, as I understand it, something that we've sort of started talking about maybe in the early 70s. But yeah, how did, I, how did, how did we, you and I discover our, our mutual interest in Ironman or that, you know, that long endurance sport mm -hmm. and maybe our passion for that sport mm -hmm. or, you know, the, what makes us Suffering. want to suffer <laughs> out, you know, to do a race yeah. that you know, is probably at least 10 hours long. I was um, doing adventure races in the late 90s and early 2000s mm -hmm. when a friend of mine told me about Ironman and uh, these adventure races that I was doing tended to be even longer, like up to seven days Ooh. of, you know, racing around outdoor environments. And then uh, I said, Oh, Ironman race. And you know, like, you have to be done in like 16 or 18 hours. I don't even know what it is. And maybe I could even be done in 12 hours. So mm -hmm. I signed up. It was like, it sounded like uh, all the things I love, you swim, bike and run. And so I did my first one in 2001. My kids were quite young and uh, we were running a business at the time. And I actually just finished an MBA. And then I said, okay, I did that. Now it's time to get serious about mm. family and, and life and business. I'll stop that. And that wasn't <laughs> such a good idea, I found out. No, never. So shortly after that, I decided, um, oh, actually, it was a few years before I did anything else in terms of like longer distance. I did one in 2006. I think that was my very next one. So that was five years later. Mm -hmm. And I think about that time, I said, well, I'd like to qualify for the world championships. Actually, prior to the race in 2006. I ended up doing that in 2008. And around that same time, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do an Ironman every five years as I age group up. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, doing these endurance sports, we actually look forward to getting older. 
because we yeah. age group up and we have the opportunity <laughs> to uh, you know, be younger in our five-year age groups. Yeah. So uh, I think next year I'm going to be doing my eighth Ironman, mm. and that will be uh, as I age group up to 55 years old. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. And where were those Ironman? All in Canada? or So obviously one was in Kona. Yes, um, that was 2008. I've done two in Canada and one in Florida mm. and one in St. George and one in Arizona. Mm. My math isn't that good. That may only be six or seven. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. It sounds impressive anyway. Like whoever has done an Ironman knows, sometimes you forget counting, but what they say is anything is possible. And the other one that I like is if you've done it once, you can brag for the rest of your life. And actually bragging, it's not really bragging because you have done it. It's nice to know that, you know, you have the heart to, uh, you know, pursue something, you know, a worthwhile objective. And is, is Ironman a worthwhile objective? Well, obviously, you and I both think it is. We started it, we trained for it, and we completed it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's something I'm proud of as well. I think so. Congratulations. And it's a lot of determination, endurance, training, many hours. And as we heard in Calgary, the sun doesn't always shine. So you might also be on the bike when it's raining. So what do you think is the most important thing for you when you sign up for an Ironman race? And signing up actually is the easiest part, I think. I think signing up is actually a, a very significant part of it. And for me, that is... Um, that's kind of the, the click or the, or the, mm -hmm. the check mark where, mm -hmm. okay, I've signed up and then, okay, I'm committed. And that just actually puts everything else in place. Yeah. So from the moment I sign up, then I start thinking about, okay, now I need to start exercising. Uh -huh. I need to take care of my body, make sure that I'm, you know, I'm, you know nimble and flexible. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, think about nutrition and mm -hmm. sleep. So actually yeah. signing up is, gets all the benefit and then the fun is training and, you know, keeping your mind sharp and your body right. sharp. And then, uh, you know, the race day is just like the celebration kind of. Yeah. And I feel like when I sign up for marathon race or any race, probably longer like marathon or Ironman, everything falls into place. And you said that, right? So I'm more organized mentally and physically. I know I have to train. I follow a plan. There is no deviation. If you deviate, you know you're going to pay for it. How do you use that as an analogy for maybe your business in the real estate? I think that's, at least for me, it's helping me tremendously. I think that's a really great question, Suzanne. So when I uh, got into real estate, actually, probably about 2002, mm -hmm. a little more serious. Well, 2002, really. So I, I had good success in, uh, in endurance sports. And Ironman, like the very first one, I would just miss qualifying for the, you know, the world championships as well. And it was easier back then. I mean, people have just <laughs> trained so much smarter and better here these mm -hmm. days. And, but I, and I wasn't particularly successful in my real estate business. And even the business I was in prior to that, you know, I was just having like fair success. Mm -hmm. And so I started to ask myself that question. Why am I having success in these like running races mm -hmm. or adventure races or even the Ironman race or biking or anything else and not in my own business? And mm -hmm. then I said, okay, that doesn't make sense. I need mm -hmm. to like figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, I actually hired a coach and uh, for my business success. And you'll be happy to hear that because I think yeah. that's what you do, really. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> to be so more successful. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, as growing up as kids, I always had a coach for you know, the sports I was involved mm -hmm. in and had great success, you know, in high school and as a, as a rugby player mm -hmm. and uh, just with constant coaching and schedule. Mm -hmm. And so um, I sort of brought that naturally into sports, but getting into business as, a, you know, in my late teens or 20s, I didn't have a coach. And then finally, I put a coach in place. Actually, it was 2006. My first business coach blew up for me. I, you know, I've been mm -hmm. coached ever since in business and in sport as well. I have mm -hmm. a coach for you know, my Ironman training as well. There's the parallel. I mean, we need, to, we need coaches in our lives or mentors. I think a lot of people say like, no, I can do everything on my own. But actually with a coach and with a coach who has the Ironman experience or the business experience, you can only learn from them and as a coach, and I do that. I push the people, I kick them gently probably, but yeah. we see results coming. And if you don't have an accountability partner, you slack off. You're like, ah, oh, tomorrow. And all of a sudden, it's the end of the week. You're like, oh, I didn't train the whole week. But if you have a plan, you follow the plan, you know, with a good plan, you, you are successful and you can even qualify for Kona. 
Absolutely. With a, you know, mm-hmm. with the, the mindset and then a little prodding and pushing from your, mm-hmm. you know, a coach or accountability partner. Yeah. I mean, then the sky becomes the limit, whether that's the mm-hmm. sport or, or business or family mm-hmm. relationships, everything. Okay. It's uh, you know, we all, yes, we can all do it ourselves, but how much better can you do it with a little help? I think so. Yeah. And I mean, like we see the people who are performing in the Olympics, they all have a coach. So then why don't we have a coach in business? I think mm-hmm. that's a very easy parallel to see. Since we met in the podcast fellowship, so tell me a little bit about your podcast. How is that going? And what is your passion there to use that word? Oh, it's just like, I'm a you know, mid-50s guy. Um, I found myself in my business, you know, my real estate business, uh, you know, been 17 or 18 years mm-hmm. doing it and having great success and being, you know, a top agent in the city. But I found myself a little bit bored. Am I relevant anymore with technology? Mm-hmm. Do I have anything to add? These are just like middle life crisis kind of questions. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so then um, I actually, what, how, what, how it happened is I started, you know, listen to podcasts and hear about podcasts and like everyone else, podcasts are booming. And so I had my 20, I guess, 21 year old son. I said, Hey, I hear about this podcast that's being offered by, you know, this guy, Seth Godin, and uh, you should sign up. Would you like to sign up? I will pay. And he, I said, you know, you're, he was struggling to find out his career choice and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he thought, oh, let me think about it. And finally he said, yeah, you know, dad, I will, I'll sign up. And so I happily paid for him and I was excited to see him podcasting about his career journey. And of course he like being the, the typical, well, you know, the early twenties and is getting pressure from his dad or sensing pressure. He maybe logged in once or twice, didn't take the course. Uh-huh. And then I saw the course being offered again, like next semester kind of thing. And I thought about giving him a hard time. Hey, you know, I paid for that course and you didn't take it. But I realized I was trying to live. I was trying to, I, I wanted to do the podcast. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, you know, it's that parent thing where, uh, you know, we try to get other people to do the things that we yeah, really yeah, want yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And so oh, then cool. I, I started the course with not really knowing what my podcast would be about. But being the type A that I am, I thought I need to have something to do with my career. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so I ended up calling it Calgary Living, Real Estate and Lifestyle. And so I get the opportunity to interview basically anyone Mm -hmm. that, for the most part, they're Calgary-based and that I have interest in, who Mm -hmm. I think are living a successful lifestyle or a successful life. And so what does success mean? Well, it's somebody living their, their vision. So it's real simple, it's real easy, and I love, love, love doing it. I think that's amazing. And what I read, obviously podcasting, they say they just hit 100 million, 500,000 are dormant. If you don't produce more than 10 episodes, then your uh, podcast is considered dormant. Mm -hmm. So I think it's exciting, and I think we're in in the right direction. What I also read is anybody who is in business, has a business card, who wants to sell something they need to have a podcast these days and Mm -hmm. when you follow daniel pink who says to sell is human everybody is a salesperson so even if you sell real estate you are selling a product but i'm selling a service so i'm selling the intellect or the intelligence and i always add my passion so you know whoever wants to come to my coaching they see how passionate I am about Iron Man podcasting. They might, oh, maybe that's a person we want to talk to. Could be you in the real estate. So I think putting yourself out there is really important these days. And learning mm-hmm. new technology, as you said, right? From your yes. son also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone told me many, many, many years ago, in order to be successful, you need to have traveled the world, <laughs> have a child, and mm-hmm. write a book. I don't know oh. if anything true, but I don't have an intention in writing a book, but I have traveled quite a bit and I do have a couple of children that are not children, they're adults now. And I've written a book and I've traveled quite a bit, but I don't have children. So I don't think you need to have everything. Maybe one of the three is good enough. And we know in triathlon, we have three elements, right? The swim, bike and run. And before we recorded, you gave me a very nice compliment when you said, thank you for reaching out. You were kind of like sitting back with the COVID, like getting a little complacent and yep. now it's the time to ship or show up again. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, you asked me about how the podcast is going on that. And I'm like, you know, it seems like this akimbo community that we're both part of. They, 
it's, it's, there's so much magic there yeah. that, uh, you know, whatever I like, I haven't published an episode of my own podcast for maybe three weeks or so. And I just kind of needed a little push. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just mm -hmm. so nice to connect with you, Suzanne, and sort of get yeah. back to it. So thanks yeah. once again on that. So what are the inspirations that you have for others? Like tips or tricks, like if you want to start something? To be a weekend warrior or plan an adventure. You know, some of the tips that are applying to business as well would be like set a date or no, actually pick an activity, pick a thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think was the first one, pick a thing. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so what mm -hmm. is that? A hike, a bike, mm -hmm, a kayak, mm -hmm. what is it? And then, uh, and so you have to pick something and then you have to pick a date. And mm -hmm. then once you have a date picked that works for you, then you need sort of people to do it with. Mm -hmm. So you need to ask Well, if you have really trusted people in your lives, and at our age, Suzanne, we do probably, mm -hmm. but if you're younger, maybe in your 20s, you have to ask at least two or three different people because people will bail on you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, um, so uh, you need to have a, you know, get people on, on, t on team. You, you mm -hmm. need some support. Mm -hmm. And then you need to get, you know, be safe or you mm -hmm. need to get training mm -hmm. to do what you want to do. Yeah, so there's like four little tips on, um, so, you know, be safe, sign up for the training or the coaching that you need mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. get those things in place. So mm -hmm. how, how would that be for four little I, tips on? <laughs> I think these are priceless because if you don't have a date, I mean, in business, we use the smart, specific, yeah. measurable, achievable, realistic, timely. I think that T comes at the very end, but we have to have yeah. that at the very beginning. So I think these tips are wonderful. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, Suzanne. It's been a real pleasure. What can I say? Always inspiring to talk to another Ironman. Many Ironman, many races, a lot of endurance, a lot of passion. Take it from the Iron Woman. Every Monday, every Wednesday, we have episodes. And don't forget to order Get Loopy. Getloopy.com. You get 20% off of your first order. It's a plant-based snack. It's good for everybody, athletes or people who are working, working from home. Take it from the Iron Woman. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.